Hey everybody, I'm Jay Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 of the Week, number one. Boom! Hummingbird and Minn Kota just upped the ante big time in the electronics wars with Target Lock. I think... <coughs> oh, <shoot. coughs> Great. What is that? Well, spot lock is Minn Kota's, you know, deal where you lock your boat in place with your trolling motor in that one spot. Well, now they have mega live forward-facing sonar that you can lock on structure. So you can have either both the locks on so your boat never moves and your boat is always always oriented toward the structure as well or either one on and then there's more wrinkles with the whole mega 360 deal wow uh, i think a lot of pros will want to be using it if they can or at least until the other two electronics manufacturers you know up the ante again i mean what's next number two that's what's next all right i gotta talk about this electronics thing again because what are we gonna do man this Target lock is going to cost another two grand to put on your boat. Now we're looking at like 10 grand of electronics to really compete at the highest technological level in tournaments. Well, guess what? Not everybody can afford that. If you can, awesome, but a lot of people can't. So what are we going to do? Guys who can't afford it, who are already fishing tournaments, are already getting discouraged even before this target lock thing. And then what about kids who are coming from modest means? I mean, their parents can't afford $10,000 worth of electronics on a boat, even if they could afford a boat. And uh, maybe those kids will get discouraged and not even fish, and we can't have that, man. Don't be discouraged. So what is the solution? I'm thinking it is electronics classes. Everybody with live scope, they fish in this class. Everybody with regular electronics, they fish in that class. And you fish the same tournament, they're just two different pots. Or another solution, but we gotta do something, man. Number three. Trip Weldon. I got to sit down with him this week for a little Q&A. He was the tournament director at Bass, of course, for 19 years. Learned a few things like he's not sure if forward-facing sonar ever will be regulated at the pro level which I understand. He also has, uh, I was gonna say failed, he has passed polygraphs after winning team tournaments, which is good to hear. He is not getting the number one boat draw in those tournaments because he's in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. Had to ask him that question. And uh, here's one thing I wanna say about Trip, man. I covered this pro side of the sport for 20 plus years. The whole time Trip was there and listen, Never, never a bad word spoken about that guy. And listen, pro bass fishing that world is gossipy like a bunch of old ladies. And to have nothing bad said about you, that says a tremendous about, um, amount about that dude. Trip, love you. Great to talk to you, man. Number four. Man, I almost hate to talk about this because I'm sure we're all sick of the clown show in Washington, D.C. from both sides, if there is a both sides anymore. But this bill if it were passed into law, would completely annihilate fish and wildlife state-level funding. And what I'm talking about is this program, it has various names, but it's the Sport Fish and Wildlife Restoration Program, I think it's called, that takes these excise taxes that we pay on stuff like guns and fishing tackle, we don't see the tax, but we pay it, and it goes to the Fish and Wildlife Service, and then they disperse billions of dollars back to the state DNRs for their budgets. It's a huge source of funding, and it's probably the only law or one of the only programs in Washington, D.C. that actually does some good. So why would these people want to gut it? It makes absolutely no sense. It has nothing to do with the Second Amendment whatsoever, because you know what? It mentions outboard motors and tackle boxes. I mean... What does that have to do with anything? It is totally and completely illogical. DC politicians, leave us alone, man! Man, how'd you like to buy a property and in a barn buried under all this stuff is a bass boat that might be a classic winning boat? You believe that? How cool is that? That actually happened to Jason Polite, I think is how you might pronounce his last name. Sorry if I got it wrong, man. I think it was in Missouri in his barn. He uncovered this boat, washed it out, looked like it was in good shape, and it turns out it might be Rick Clun's 
winning boat from the 1984 classic on the Arkansas River. I think that's back when they all had to fish out of identical rangers, which is really cool. It says Bassmasters Classic on the side. Now, Rick doesn't know for sure if it was his boat, but hey, it doesn't matter. Jason, if it's me, man, I'm saying it was his boat, and then I'm putting it on eBay, or maybe they'll take it at Barrett Jackson, man. But either way, congratulations on that find. That is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Too cool. All right, everybody, that's your top five for the week. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to subscribe to the Bass Blaster email. That's all I got for you this week. See you next week. God bless you.